Have you ever been in your life and you looked at something or someone and deeply desired what they had, what they did, who they are, how they showed up in the world? Well, I, I felt like that. I mean, many of us have felt the same way. And so instead, I got to a point in my life where I was like, I wonder what it would look like to have what they have or do what they do or be how they are or think how they think. And instead of sitting around with a bunch of question marks, I started asking myself, can this be a game? And this game I called the game of getting what I want. And I wanna to talk to you today about the game of getting what you want. My name is Jasmine Starr and I go by many titles. Around 2006, I decided that I wanted to become a photographer and I didn't own a camera. Oh, crazy. What were the odds of my success? Very little than none if we're being real. Like I was gifted a camera from Best Buy and nobody would think that a couple years later I would be talked about and known as one of the best photographers in the world. I started getting awards for what I was doing. I started creating content for what I was doing. I started sharing my journey. And then lo and behold, somewhere around 2010, I stepped into the world of being a content creator. I was making content about my journey. I was making content sharing what I knew. And then lo and behold, on the back of being, yes, a photographer with clients, and yes, a content creator, other businesses started asking me around 2012 if I could consult them on their businesses, on their content strategy, on their marketing, and their branding. And I thought to myself, well, you know, I'd never done that before, but I had also never been a photographer and I also had never been a content creator. So why don't I just try something new? And I did it so well and so much that I started realizing, I think I can do this even on a bigger scale. So sometime around 2015, I decided to launch my very first digital course because I wanted to serve more people. I wanted to have a way to scale what I was so passionate about and what I was creating content about. And so I started creating courses. And then I noticed this crazy thing with courses is that people actually don't finish a lot of the courses they buy. In fact, less than 10% of people who ever bought a digital course ever finished a digital course. And I thought to myself, well, this message that I'm talking about and how I'm passionate about business and I want to help people, but if only 10% are finishing it, there's got to be 90% of people who got to get where they want to go. How can I serve them differently? So then it was around 2017 that I thought to myself, well, what if I created a membership? And this membership wasn't this long course. This membership was live and it was thriving. We had real-time classes, we had education, and we had resources and everything you wanted to know about marketing, branding, and just living your best life. I wanted to do that. So 2017 comes around and I try this idea and it's really great until I realize that the very thing I'm teaching about, which is marketing and branding and building your business, I come to realize that people actually want a way to put out their marketing content with ease. And then I realized, well, dang, in order for me to do that, I probably have to become a CEO of a SaaS company, a software as a service. And your girl has never written a line of code, nor do I know anything about proper development. And I thought to myself, I'm probably unqualified, unfunded, unconnected, and uneducated, but my whole life had been a series of uns, and I finally decided to get <sighs> above it. I decided to say, I have been here before, and I found a way through. So I started asking myself, here we are, this year, and my question for you is, can you turn into getting what you want as a game? And it's not a game that ends. It's a game that keeps on going until you take your last breath. So guess what? There's no rush. So what if we were to turn this into a game? How can you get what you want? But I'm here to tell you that I have my way and I'm gonna share that with you. And it doesn't have to be your way. But if by sitting here and us having this conversation to be like, is this my way? If it's not, you're actually closer to finding your way on your own, which is just as good for me. All I do is help people find their own way. And if you take a little bit of my, great. And if you add a little spice and sabor from somebody else, I'm here for it, this is cool. Now, the game of getting what you want is broken up into three parts, success, freedom, and purpose. So let's break these down one by one so you and I have a very clear way at the end of this quick conversation of getting to what you want. So my question to you is what is success? Like quite honestly, people are like, oh, I know what success is. Success is, well, you know. No, actually I don't. Some people say it's a car. Some people say it's a zip code. Some people say it's a waistline. Some people say it's a trip on the Amalfi Coast. Some people say it's as many commas and zeros in your bank account, okay. But somebody else's definition of success should not be your own. But oftentimes what we do is we wear somebody else's jacket and be like, it kinda sorta fits. Baby, you ain't Goldilocks. You need a custom suit made for you. But do you even know the specifications of what it is you want? I'm the daughter of an immigrant. 
My father came from Mexico, my mother from Puerto Rico, and they met in East Los Angeles. My dad is one of the hardest working men I have ever met in my life. He took on four, five jobs at a time to put food on the table for his family at dinner. And even in spite of all of that, money was always tight. Money was never something that we had in access. There were people at church who donated food and clothes. And here's the thing, we lived in the hood and you know it's hard in the hood when your neighbors are leaving food on your porch. Like that's how you know times are tough. But it wasn't lack of hard work. It was simply us trying to make ends meet. But my early years shaped me into believing and understanding and seeing the world like I was a recipient of benevolence. I was given somebody else's charity. I received what somebody wanted to give, which is beautiful and it was fine. But life was happening to me, I was not happening to it. It wasn't until cancer changed everything. So I'm the first generation Latina. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I'm the first in my family to go to law school. Oh yeah, I probably should put that in there too. I dropped out of law school and my mom had a relapse of brain cancer. And I have to tell you, it was the hardest, darkest moment of my life. I was 25 years old and all I remember thinking to myself as we walked up the stairs at USC Norris Hospital in downtown Los Angeles, it was New Year's Eve and myself and my four siblings and my father walked very solemnly into the ICU unit because my mom had yet another brain surgery. There she was in bed and she's completely bald and she has a shunt in her head and the nurses look at us and they know it's past visiting hours, but it's New Year's Eve. So they're gonna let us go. There's gonna be like, they look at us and they look the other way. So we walk into the unit with my mom and there she is bald and we bring party hats and streamers and nobody's really feeling all that great. Because when we're talking about our mom's greatest memories and her greatest memories for herself, we had to ask, what is success? But what is regret? Because on that bed, my mom was not talking about the things that she had done. She was talking about the things that she had not done. And so how many of us go through life thinking about the things we will do until we're faced with the stark reality of everything we had not yet done. And I was 25 years old and my mom gave me a gift on that night because what she was saying was in the future, I don't want you, oh daughter of mine, to wonder what had I not yet done. And everything changed for me. I should probably also like fill in the gaps of the story that my mom at the time of this creation and this recording is still with me. But at the time, we thought her life was ending. And I have now learned to live every day as if it is my last because quite honestly, it could be. So what stops us from doing the thing we want? What stops us from our version of success? Never mind the yachts, never mind the Amalfi Coast, never mind the 90210, never mind all of that. You have your version of success. At least I hope you do. But what actually stops you from getting that? What actually stops you from saying, I'm gonna take my family on a four week vacation? What actually stops you from saying, oh, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna retire my partner. What stops you from it? Ah, oh, comparison that we cannot achieve what other people have that we cannot do what other people have done and we will not get as much as other people have. Ooh, we don't have, nor will we get to have, nor will we ever do. Our own thoughts are stopping us from getting the very thing. Nobody else is stopping your success than you. And nobody else is gonna empower your success than you. So let's have that conversation first. You must define success for yourself and then not listen to anything or anybody else's opinion about it. And once you define your success, you have to put blinders on and you put, gotta put cotton in your ears and you have to say that no matter what, this is what it means for me. Other people might do it better, they might do it faster, they might do it cheaper. They might even be cuter and have more social media followers. That doesn't matter. You are running your own race and the only person who will stop you is you. Once we have this idea that success is something we earn and success could also be stopped by us, then we have to realize that success isn't things. How do you measure the worth or excitement of a vacation? That's not a thing. What we measure is the thing in relation to what we have done. Success is what one does. What did you do to get what it is you want? You know that very cliche say, thing that people say is like, oh, it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. Well, right, 
And then all of a sudden you get to a point in your life and you're like, it is. What did I do to get that? When you are on the Amalfi Coast and when you finally get your own private jet or when you finally buy your mom a house or a car, it's not the car. It is what you did to get there that makes you feel like a success. Because I will tell you right now, let me, let me tell you, I can give you a car in your driveway right now and it'll feel good and you'll feel happy and you're like, oh, this is great. You won't feel like more or less of a success. Why? It was what you had done. You will say, I got lucky with the car instead of saying, I work for that car and I'm a success because of the decisions I made and the discipline I had to get to where I wanted to go. So now we're looking at success and we're feeling like, okay, I can take a little bit of ownership in it. Okay, success is not things, it's what, what does and I'm, I'm here, great. Now let's get into part two of this game. What is freedom? So just like success, we have to define freedom. So let me just start off with an exact definition from Webster'sDictionary.com. Freedom is the power to act, think, or speak without hindrance or restraint. Now, as a business owner, when I talk to other people pursuing their dreams, that definition of freedom exists, but it's also kind of like an element. Like, let's just make it, let me just tell you, I have, I've spoken to, I have guided, I have engaged with more than 45,000 entrepreneurs in the course of my creating businesses. And you wanna know what I hear? Jasmine, freedom. I wanna work wherever, whenever, with whomever I want. That's my freedom. Okay, if that anywhere, anywhere somehow resonates with you, great. Well then, if that is what you want, then we must come to the understanding that freedom is setting parameters to protect your time. Because if you want to work whenever, however, and with whom, that just doesn't happen. That happens when you are fully cognizant of saying, I must add constraints to get the freedom I want. Now here's the thing, in 2007, you know, I had mentioned I had started my career as a photographer in 2006, and then all of a sudden, I'm telling you, 2007, business just kind of takes off in really big ways. For the first time in my entire life, as a girl from the hood, I am making multiple six figures. I didn't even know that kind of money existed in real life. I was making more in one year than my dad had made with a family of seven over five years. So here I am being like, oh, you got lucky. So you have to keep up this pace to get where it is you want to go. And so in 2008, the business grew so much that I brought my husband as my co-founder business partner. We start traveling the world and we start taking clients and we're thinking we're living the life, right? We're living the life. This is life, right? Okay, we're living. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And by 2009, all of a sudden, we felt like we were on a freight train. We're like, hang on, this is the life. This is freedom, right? This is freedom. We're free. We're free. And we were not free. We were exhausted. What we were doing and how we were living came to a complete stop because there were late nights alone. I was handcuffed to email. I was editing all night. There was client fulfillment, there was client support. I was creating marketing content. I was trying to be innovative. I was trying to develop. I was doing all of these things until I got a phone call from my very, very good friend who had said, Jasmine, they rushed him to Mayo Clinic. He hit his head. They did a scan and they noticed a tumor and they gave him a couple months to live. This was a good friend who had started our businesses together. We had traveled the world together. Our husbands were the same age. And guess where I took her phone call? On my cell phone, in my office, in front of my computer at 10 p.m. at night. Ooh. I hung up the phone, but just before I did, I was like, is there anything that I could do for you? Like, how can I help? And she said, I want you and to go and give your husband a hug and a kiss and just appreciate him. I was so embarrassed. I was humiliated. I hung up the phone. I sat in our stairwell. We live in a tiny condo. And he was sitting down at the couch and he had fallen asleep because I told him, hey, we're gonna go watch TV together, but let me just finish this one thing. And then that one thing took three hours. And so I sat on the stairwell and I watched him sleep. And I called out to him and I said, hey, I'm so sorry. And he says, is everything okay? I was like, I'm sorry, I messed up. This isn't freedom. This is not fulfillment. We're busy and we're making money, but this is not how I wanna do it and I'm sorry. That opened my eyes to understanding that I must create the life I want, I simply cannot hope for it to happen. So how then, on the back of that, did I learn how to create freedom?
I did it in three main ways that still maintain to this day. Number one, I defined my version of freedom. And this is where, just like success, your version of freedom really looks different. There are some people who are like, I wanna be free to work 14 hours a day. Good on you. Some people say, I wanna do a four hour work week. Good for you. Whatever is your freedom, you, fir you first have to define it. And then number two, after you've defined your freedom, you have to assess what actually fits in to that definition of freedom. So for example, a definition of freedom for me is I want to be able to have dinner with my family every night. In order for me to do that, I actually have to close my computer at six. I have a daughter, I have a husband, we're not gonna be eating at nine o'clock at night. If my version of freedom is to enjoy dinner with them, I must have the discipline to close my computer at six. So if I have a task that I could start at 5.45 that I know was gonna take me 30 or 45 minutes, I must choose to say, I'm going to stop work at six. Why? Because it doesn't fit in to my version of freedom. I must define it, I must assess what fits into this. And anything that does not fit into my version of freedom, number three, I outsource it, I wait to pursue the project, or I let it go. In order for us to be free, we must have parameters for us to live on our terms. Not say, I want freedom in business, but then never think about what it actually costs to have that freedom. Everything comes at a cost. You wanna have a good relationship, it comes at a cost. If you wanna let your relationship go, it comes at a cost. You, do, you don't wanna be a slave to your toothbrush, it comes at a cost. You're gonna be a slave to a dentist, that comes to a cost. Everything comes with a cost. My cost for having freedom is gonna come from the back of discipline. So freedom doesn't just happen. Freedom is created. So you've defined your success and now we're working on defining our freedom and we're working on creating and pushing things away that do not happen for us and help us and trust that it's part of this process that's getting us to the game of what we want, which leads us to our third and final piece of this game, asking ourselves, what is purpose? So there was a time in my business for many years, I wrote blog posts that nobody read. I created posts on social media that nobody responded to. I would go to events and I would speak to empty rooms. I would record podcasts that nobody listened to. I would go live and nobody would watch. I would make an offer and people would say no. And that happened again and again and again. And there were many times that I stopped and I asked myself, what am I doing this for? Why am I putting myself through this torture of feeling like a fool? of dwelling in hope, of not getting results, of feeling like other people are watching me flail publicly. What am I doing this for? How could I keep on going? And I have to tell you, the answer for me was how I kept going. I simply copied what I saw. I kept going by copying what I saw. And I have to tell you, I learned how to create a purpose in a trailer park. So my grandmother, lived in a trailer park in Las Vegas, Nevada. Come from, from Puerto Rico to the Bronx to LA and then later deciding to retire in a trailer park in Las Vegas, Nevada. And the thing that I learned after hearing about her stories, about hearing about her resilience, about hearing about her dedication and her perseverance is that purpose isn't present. Purpose is generational. So that when my grandmother was doing things and making hard decisions and getting up after getting kicked in the face again and again and again, was that she believed deep down that her purpose far superseded what she had been put on this earth to do. My grandmother is from a very, very small hill town in Puerto Rico called Ciales, Puerto Rico. The last time I looked at a government census around 2010, there was about 10,000 people that lived in Cialis in 2010. So just imagine how much smaller it was when she was there years and years ago. She met my grandfather there. They didn't have any running water. People were washing their clothes by hand. This was the poorest of poor in Puerto Rico. But what she did was decided with her new husband to move to the States and somehow a little bit later end up in East Los Angeles, California. She had three children. She took three buses to work, and multiple routes along that bus because she had a child with special needs. My uncle has high special needs, so she took him to a separate school, took her daughter to a separate school, took her other son to a separate school. 
She was financially dependent on my grandfather. They had an acrimonious relationship. She was a sweatshop seamstress. So her hands were often muddled with crusted blood, cuticles, work from sewing basketballs in the winter and sewing bathing suits in the summer, and she refused to quit. She was not given that option. So what did I copy? Well, I copied and understood that purpose requires perseverance. Purpose requires patience. And purpose requires the promise not to quit. Because she had no idea that all those years ago, on that bus, on that night, after a long day of putting food on the table, her husband to bed and having to do it again and again and again and again, that she wasn't just doing it for her husband and she wasn't just doing it for her children, she was doing it for her grandchildren, who she does not have the privilege to see stepping on stages that she could only dream of. She was doing it for her great-granddaughter to see that her mom is in rooms doing things that was once impossible to even imagine. My God, whatever it is you're doing and you feel like you're doing it alone and no one's paying attention, guess what? Somebody who will come after you will look at you and say, thank you for breaking the chain. Thank you for being a sojourner. Thank you for being an immigrant, not just of place, not just of lineage, but being an immigrant of emotional intellectualism to say, I will do things differently so that I get different results. So when people say, how do you get what you want? Number one. I define my version of success. Number two, I define versions of freedom that belong only to me. And three, I stand in my purpose. And that purpose is to remind other people that things that were once impossible can be possible if you refuse to quit. I wanna say thank you for having this conversation with me. I wanna say thank you for being here on this particular platform. I do my best to respond to comments. I do my best to respond to messages, but please know that I took the time to create this video because I believe that you can get what it is you want on the back of not quitting, on the back of creating your own definition, and on the back of trusting that the work you put in today is not just for you, it is for future generations to come. I appreciate you being here.